Pyongyang has put the world on notice. It's prepared to walk away from next month's summit in Singapore unless it hears a deal more to its liking. For more, let's cross to Sheffield, England. Hazel Smith, who teaches at London School of Oriental and African Studies, SOAS, is the author of North Korea, Markets and Military Rule. Thank you for joining us on France 24. Thank you for having me on the program. Is this, is the chances of Pyongyang walking away from that June 12th summit, are they serious? I think it's too much to jump from one particular statement that's made by the North Korean press agency to a wholesale assumption that there's going to be a change in the strategy. The answer is we don't know because none of us can predict the future. And because we all know that even for us that have worked on North Korea for a long time, worked on North Korea for nearly 30 years, uh, the political processes inside North Korea are still fairly opaque. But it's also wrong to think that there are no political processes going on, even in an authoritarian state. There are divisions within the leadership over how to deal with the Americans, how to deal with the rest of the world. And what we seem to be seeing here really is some emergence uh, of those divisions. We've seen it before uh, when there was rapprochement between North and South Korea and partly with the United States in the late 1990s. There was always a toing and froing between those who in North Korea who wanted to see diplomacy and those that were much more mistrustful of the United States. So I think that we can we can see this as, as, as part and parcel of that, most but, likely, we don't know for sure. But didn't the North Koreans get their ducks in order before that uh, summit we saw last month with uh, the South Korean president? Well, what we know from all countries, whether we think about France or whether we think about the UK, is that internal politics in relationship to foreign policy are always complicated. If we look at the UK, and we look at the negotiations of Brexit, it might seem a far cry from North Korea. What we find is that there are continuing discussions, very visible discussions though in the UK, because it's a democracy, and that affects foreign policy. It's also true of states which are not democratic, is even when there's a coalition of the willing, so to speak, there are always going to be continued historic divisions, cultural divisions in North Korea, familial divisions between who's got power and who hasn't. That's going to be ongoing. The question is, how are the leadership going to manage these, such as to be able to achieve the strategy which, I, which, is, which they want, which is one regime security, uh, they worried about John Bolton because John Bolton, John Bolton in the past has talked about regime change in North Korea uh, and how to get economic development and, yeah, and one, they, that without the other. Let's talk about John Bolton, the new national security advisor to Donald Trump, making that statement about uh, how North Korea should follow the Libyan model when it comes to nuclear disarmament. Why does that so rattle Pyongyang? Well, I think many of your viewers will be remember the pictures that were taken of uh, Mr. Gaddafi when he was, just before he was killed in Libya. And I don't think any of the North Korean regime or the leadership want to be reminded that that could possibly be their fate. In fact, one of the reasons they want to come to a deal with the United States is to preserve the possibility that they can continue to hold power in North Korea, even in a state which has got better relations with the West. So they will not want to think about their future uh, as in any way being akin to what happened to Mr. Gaddafi. And I think that that's actually pretty straightforward. And either Mr. Bolton misspoke uh, or there was perhaps less, uh, uh, or it was a deliberate attempt to say that, uh, we, and we don't know, we don't know inside John Bolton's mind as to this could be the fortune of, of the North Korean leadership. But yeah, it would certainly be... Because that was, that was my next question. Why did he say that, you know? Well, we'd have to ask John Bolton for that. But what we do know is that it's not John Bolton that's been calling the shots on the United States policy. It's been Mr. Pompeo along with President Trump. And they both still want to see a diplomatic victory in North Korea in terms of denuclearization uh, and something which President Trump can say, look, I did this. It's a foreign policy victory. Other presidents haven't been able to do it. So John Bolton isn't in the leading role. He is national security advisor, but that's a coordinating role in terms of advice to the president. And we know from President Trump's um, tenure so far that he doesn't always listen to those even that he appoints as advisors. So I think this is a bit of a sidetrack, but it is the North Koreans reminding us that they want to see a deal which gives them security. That's the, the, the political uh, elite security as well as to give the territorial 
uh, security that they that they want. They've made this absolutely clear. They've said they will have denuclearization, but they want a security deal. And that, that's not new, and they're reinforcing that in these statements. Hazel Smith of uh, SOAS, many thanks for joining us from Sheffield. Thank you.